Hey guys, VBad here with another V-Play. It's going to be taking out the Blenheim Mark IV. Despite the Mark IV, it is a Tier 3 Premium Bomber. I uh, feel like I'm seal clubbing a little bit here, but I have a mission to accomplish so many bombing or destroy so many ground targets at Tier 4 or below. Uh, I feel as though this is a perfectly viable option. I was able to get this from the 2000 gold that came in with the what is it, the coming back to World Warplanes 2.0, it was like recon missions, you get a total of 2,000 gold for completing a series of, I'd say quests or challenges, but essentially it boils down to being just playing the game. The so what we're going to do here is be we're going to do low altitude bombing runs, and I find this to be a much more entertaining way to play a bomber aircraft. See, the thing is, the accuracy of a bomb is essentially dictated based on altitude. So the further away you are from the target, the more it can deviate from the initial launch position. So even though you get this nice crosshair reticle, that big circle around it is where the bomb could possibly fall. I'll show you an example here, but as we start to dive show towards the target, you, do, you will see that circle Let's on the ground, roll. how much smaller it gets as we descend lower altitude. We're going to get so low that we won't even be able to go into the bomb site mode anymore, which you get from hitting shift if you've never flown a bomber. The other advantage of flying low is the enemy can't really see you that well. If they do see you, they're going to see the bomber icon and assume you're at high altitude when you clearly aren't. And the other advantage is your engines perform much better the lower you are. Essentially, when you fly at super high altitude, you're flying well beyond the normal envelope that these engines were meant to operate in. That's why it's yellow when you're flying at high altitude. The problem, however, from flying low is that you're not going to have the bomb reticle. Ooh, hello. I'll finish this off. So you have to kind of gauge where the bomb should go. Which, once you get a handle on it, isn't too, too bad to be able to do. As you can see, we've been consistently hitting these targets. Be advised. The and that should be the zone captured. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the terrain, these giant mountains. It's called direct terrain masking because it's directly between us. And I am going to go towards the enemy base. The reload on the Blenheim is extremely fast, so... We'll be loaded in a couple seconds here, but I'm going to use the terrain, as you can see on the radar here, to sneak between these mountaintops to be able to get around. Bombers have an exceptionally long boost time, so that's going to allow me to be able to sneak around the enemy fairly quickly. They apparently have ignored this objective completely and did the standard low tier pile on to the middle. Yep, I'm already here, man. I should be able to get it fairly quickly. There are going to be some defensive aircraft in the area that are going to try and give me a hard time here. Boop. As you can see, right in the middle. Once you start to get a handle on it, it ain't so bad. Well, I don't want you to get this. I'm going to get it. Now all I need to do is drop on this target, and we should be good to go. Yes, the enemy is hurting me. But, we managed to take two zones rather quickly. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and leave the area. I'm going to get a little bit of altitude here. And I'm going to go to my gunner beam. Try and hurt these aircraft as they chase me. I'm looking at the radar. Yep. I knew that post was coming. I am just outside of his gun range, so he is having a heck of a time trying to get me. See the terrain coming up? Swap back over. And we still haven't captured our zone either, which is not necessarily good, but you can see we're ticking away on the capture points. Use a little bit of that boost that's available. Oh, looks like that I-15 died. Where is that bomber even at? Can't even see him. I know he's over there based on the icon. 
There's not a whole lot in the middle either. It says we're at 400 feet, but I'm assuming that means based off the lowest point on the map. In theory, that would be sea level. Hit X here, that guy is 2,000 away and departing, so he is not chasing. And hit Alt here to see what zones are yet to be captured, and their ground attacker just crashed into the ground. No need for me to be here anymore. There is a target chasing me, which is going to be interesting. Because I'm going to try something kind of sneaky here. Way to go! Victory is close! Nope, nobody's actually chasing me. Let's see if this does anything. Nope. Today. was trying we'll to drop a bomb in his home. path in order to destroy him, which is another tactic you can use. So let's go to the garage and see how we did. Uh, this is kind of a low combat score match. When you superiority that quickly, it ends the match, and it's not always a good thing. We're able to capture two zones very quickly. The enemy team did not think the capture zones were important, and that, was, that led to their eventual downfall. Uh, but like we said, flying at tier 3 is kind of seal clubbing, kind of. It's totally seal clubbing. And here's that mission, that daily progress where I need to destroy 70 ground targets. So in that match, we ended up destroying a total of 8 ground targets. So decent progress, but not spectacular. When it comes to the crew skills, uh, demolition expert is goes without saying. I mean, you're a bomber. You want your bombs to be strong. Uh, it increases the blast radius as well as the damage by 15%, which means I don't need to be dead on. Although, even if I am dead on, it's going to most likely destroy everything with the extra 15% damage. When I get the second skill point, I will be getting protection expert because I will continue to fly this as a low-level bomber. And I will want it to be safe, so we will give it some more hit points as a result of this protection expert. You can see here it increases the effects of... Concealing livery, the improved covering, reinforced airframe, and additional armor plates. Uh, we are not running additional armor plates, but we are running concealment livery, which reduces AA uh, effectiveness by 30%. Improved covering, which decreases critical damage to wing and tail by 20%, but most importantly, increases the hit points by 5%. Same thing for reinforced airframe. It does give us a bonus, negative uh, 10% chance for critical damage to engines, crew, wing, and tail, which is good because we want to keep the gunner safe, and 15% to the overall HP. I'm overdue for reskilling this guy. I had on here precision gunner because that causes critical damage or an increased chance of critical damage, but what I really should be doing since that gun has such low damage output is defensive fire. This reduces the amount of incoming damage by 30%, which will increase the survivability, and considering I'm going to be flying this inside of harm's way, I should give myself as much protection as humanly possible. And like we said before, we are going to get a bonus from Protection Expert that's going to buff all three of these pieces of equipment right here. I am running Fire Extinguisher because you don't want to be burning. Got to put that out. The first aid is to keep that gunner up and running. I'm not, I don't care so much about the pilot. I can still manage to hit the targets because I am literally on top of them, so I don't need to worry about that. And then the pneumatic restarter in order to get the engines back up and running because we're going to use our speed to maneuver around the battlefield as well as try to outrun some of the slower fighters. That pretty much does it for the Blenheim and the low bombing uh, operations. Um, I will be putting out a video on the Doe 217M. The Doe 217M is a bigger brother bomber right here. You're looking at a tier 6 bomber. It carries 8 of the same, relatively the same size bombs that the Blenheim gets. The Blenheim's bombs are 250 pound bombs. 
I take it back. They're actually much smaller. Uh, these are only 250 pound bombs. They do a total of 2,200 damage and 197 blast radius. That does not take into account the increase from the demolition expert. But these do 4,400 and 246 foot radius. So you're talking about double the amount of damage coming out of each one of these bombs and you get a total of eight of them which you can drop individually, which is very, very potent and it's a lot of fun to use. Uh, as you can see, the thing's bristling with guns. As well. I wouldn't be v bad if I wasn't inundating you with erroneous information. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, and I hope you enjoyed watching some of the gameplay of the Blenheim, which really it can be a lot of fun and a decent credit earner. Uh, this was a very short match and I earned 40 credits in a tier three. That's why I'm in my SEAL Clubber plane. Sorry guys. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the video.